Yes, the Holy Spirit came to the women of Iran. She rabosi 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 r
it, whether negative or positive, we're pulling from negative and positive. We have the power of life and we have the power of death. So what are we speaking over our battle and what are we speaking over the breakthrough? What are we speaking over the addict in our life, the alcoholic in our life, the one that's always in trouble and going to jail in our life? What are we speaking over them? Are we telling people that they're a hopeless cause and speaking a hopeless cause over their lives? Or are we speaking life that they're gonna change? You know, I kept saying that my baby Alec was bad. Alexander's bad, he's my bad one. And you know, it was the truth. I got convicted. Aunt Lizzie Rose looked at me and said, don't say that, he's not bad. He's a good boy. And you know, Jeannie Heath used to talk about how from the time she had Huey Jr., no matter what happened or what went on in life, she always called him her God man, that God had told her he was gonna give her a God man and she would call him her God man. We have to speak life into our situations. We have to speak life over our friends and our family. We have to quit speaking death and condemnation over people. We have to stop speaking negativity. We're not going to get anywhere and we're not going to make any things sit and mumbling and complaining and talking negatively. We're praying and we're fighting and we're on this page because we're looking for the miracle. We're looking for the breakthrough, but we're speaking death and curses. It can't be. We can't pray for God and try to fight in his spirit and then speak a death and curse into the situation because it's literally the opposite effect. We can't do that. We have to not only be fighting for it and praying for it, but we have to be speaking the right words into it. You know, there was a saying back in the day, if you don't have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. And I don't know what happened to it, but I find a lot of us is really busy losing our Christianity through our flesh every day, saying all these horrible things that we shouldn't be saying. Like, oh my God, she's it, like down, you'll see a picture on Facebook and you're like, I wouldn't wear that outfit and I'm not as fat as her. We're speaking death. We're speaking negativity. We can't be speaking these kinds of ways about other people and because when our mouth is ruining us our mouth is ruining our christian walk it's ruining our spirit it's ruining our anointing and it's gonna ruin the battle for us it is going to sink our battleship we have to start paying attention to the words that are coming out of our mouth so proverbs 13 verse 3 says he who guards his mouth preserves his life but he who opens wide his lips will have destruction. So let's look at that again for a minute. He who guards his mouth preserves his life. When we preserve our life, we extend our life. We, we walk in a better, healthier way. But he who opens wide his lips will have destruction. The more we run our mouths, the more destruction we're sowing into our lives. And we don't need no more destruction in our life. We have enough destruction in our life. We must start to be a watchman over our mouth and our speech. We have to become aware of the things that is coming out of our mouth. And trust me, I've learned this lesson firsthand lately because my mouth has been out of control for the last two weeks and my husband was the first one to look at me and say, how long are you gonna continue to talk like this because this has gotten ridiculous? And a friend of mine said, okay, you need to stop now. Our mouths will ruin us every time. We have to start paying attention to what we are saying. We have life and death in the power of our tongue and we choose what we say. We choose whether we want to be mean and nasty with it or what we wanna do with it. Now, I wanna to go to Matthew verse 12 and I'm gonna start in verse 33 and I'm gonna to read to 37. So Matthew 12 and 33 says, either make the tree good and its fruit good or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by its fruit. We can't try to live a holy life and then be speaking terrible things out of our mouth because that's bad fruit. That's not good fruit. We need to be bearing good fruit, not bad fruit. Okay, so 34 says, O generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word that men speak, they will give an account on the day of judgment. Okay, for every idle word we speak, 
we are going to give an account on the day of judgment. Now just picture because I literally should be embarrassed for some of the things I've said about people in the past that I'm going to have to stand before Jesus and say like, oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have called her that or this or that. We're, oh, like picture standing there and like people knowing how hard you was praying for a breakthrough and maybe, you know, you was speaking death into your situation. We're going to have to give an account for that. Now let's look at 37 for a minute. For by your words, you will be justified and by your words, you will be condemned. Okay, so we learned life and death is in the power of the tongue. And then what does this say? By your words, you will be justified and by your words, you will be condemned. Our words are powerful. We like to sit and think that our words don't mean nothing, but God didn't give us mouths and words just to hear ourselves talk. There is power in them. There is anointing in the word. There, uh, that's why he stresses the point over and over again. And we're praying for things, but then we're speaking terrible things out over our family and our life. We're speaking hopelessness. We're not speaking positivity into our situations. We're not speaking God's word into the situation. Instead, we're speaking terrible things. And look, look what it says. That word idol, that word idol, okay? Because we love to think of it as certain ways, but that word idol means without purpose or effect, right? Pointless and unprofitable, okay? So what a bunch of malarkey are we spitting out of our mouths? What kind of things are we babbling on about that's sinking our ships and keeping us from our victories? our own mouths stopping us and it's all a bunch of unprofitable and what does mark 8 and 36 say and it says what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul so why are we sitting uh, saying a bunch of unprofitable things a bunch of pointless things that have no purpose over our situations and over our lives when we need these big miracles we need to see these big things happen so we have to learn to speak with purpose and how do we speak with purpose we speak with purpose by speaking out those things that god would have us speak out we speak with purpose by throwing out his scriptures over his life our lives we pray the scriptures over our lives we quote the scriptures over our lives we use our mouths with purpose for him not for idleness if you're going to speak and you're gonna run your mouth and you're not going to remain silent, well then at least make sure it's useful, that it's done with wisdom and that it brings life and it gives edification and exaltation to the body. You know, they say that um, when you first have a, when your, your mouth is out of control or you're angry or you have a bad temper, they say that you should stop and you should think for five seconds, right? So I think that's what we need to start doing. We need to stop and before we speak something, we need to wait for five seconds and say, is it good? Does it uplift the situation? Does it help and prosper the situation? Or does it only make things worse and bring destruction? Because that's a good way to weigh what we should be saying. See, the enemy doesn't need to come and take us out if we're busy taking our own selves out with our tongue. He don't need to come meddle in our battle if we're taking out our own battle by our tongues and by the way we're running our mouths. Because why would he need to get involved or even come against us if we're busy coming against our own selves? And I've watched it so much lately that I told my husband, I said, that person's praying for something and look what they just posted on Facebook. They just spoke death into the situation. Or people has called me and said, pray for so-and-so. I mean, it probably won't help. They're gonna die anyway. That's speaking death into a situation. We need to quit doing that. We need to quit taking our own selves out, right? We need to learn and discern when to speak and when to remain silent. My mom used to always tell me, if you ain't got nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. And you know, there is a time to speak and there is a time to remain silent. And even, you know, when it comes to godly things, there's a time to speak and a time to remain silent. Just because you got a great prophecy this morning, doesn't mean that you should run out and cast your pearls before everybody and tell everybody what God said to you because some people's going to be like the fowler and they're going to try to come and snatch that seed. You know, a good example of that even too was like Jericho. Jericho, God told them to march around silently. You know, there was a reason they were to remain silent. Sometimes we're to speak, but sometimes we're to remain silent. And we have to start learning and discerning when to speak and when to remain silent and quit letting our mouths ruin our lives. 
Ecclesiastics 3 verse 7 says that there's a time to tear and a time to mend. And that there's a time to be silent and a time to speak. If you don't know when to speak and when to be silent in your situation, then you need to pray for God to show you when to speak and when to be silent. And we're going to flip over for a minute and we're going to read Proverbs chapter 17 and it's verse 27 and 28. And it says, he who has knowledge spares his words and a man of understanding is an excellent spirit. But even a fool, when he holds his peace, is counted wise. And he who shuts his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. If you're not saying nothing good and you're talking a bunch of foolishness, then you're better to remain silent. Look what it says. Even a fool, when he holds his peace, is counted wise. And when he shuts his lips, is esteemed a man of understanding. So it's better to be quiet than to speak a bunch of foolishness over yourself. And look at the front part of that again. He who has knowledge spares his words. He doesn't overspeak words. He doesn't just go around just spewing out words to hear himself talk, but he spares his words, right? He counts them and he speaks what's profitable. And that's what we want to do. And you know, you could go back and you could read pretty much the whole entire book of Proverbs. And I can't tell you how many times Solomon, who was known for being one of the wisest men in the Bible, talked about watching your tongue and shutting your mouth and thinking wisely before you're letting it go. So I'm going to read James 3, and it's going to be verse 4 through 10 real quick. And it says this. It says, And observe ships, though they are so great and are driven by fierce winds, yet they are directed with a very small rudder, wherever the captain pleases. Even so, the tongue is a little part of the body and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles? Little fire sets those giant wildfires in California. And a little thing of the tongue sinks our battleship. Look at that. A little, the tongue's the smallest little muscle in the body, but it literally can sink our battleship. The tongue is a fire, a world of evil. The tongue is among the parts of the body, defiling the whole body and setting the course of nature on fire. And it is set on fire by hell. Now we're going to go down to seven. All kinds of beasts and birds and serpents and things in the sea are tamed or have been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. With it, we bless the Lord and Father. And with it, we curse men who are made in the image of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing, my brothers. These things ought not to be so. The enemy has been intruding in the gateway of our mouth for too long. You know, I'll tell you, everybody talks about the greatest tactics of the enemy. And I think the greatest tactic of the enemy is he's took away our sensitivity to things. He's crept in over the millennia here to where he's desensitized us to some of his tactics and we're not even aware he's doing it. And he has made us think that what we say does not matter. That we can just go around saying whatever we want, whenever we want, and whatever way we want. But the Bible tells us over and over and over again about watching our speech. And there's a reason for it. Because life and death is in the power of our tongues today. Our blessings and miracles is in the power of our tongues today. Blessings and cursings is in the power of our tongues today. Our words are containers of power. Our words can literally cast out demons. Our words can make the enemy flee. There is power in what we say. But we've gotten so busy. Listen, how many times have you been in a Christian group and you've heard cursing, dirty jokes, People speaking negatively, murmuring and complaining like the Israelites, gossiping, lying, people using it to manipulate people, and the list goes on and on and on. And it's all with the power of the mouth, right? And the more we do these things, we move into the enemy territory, and when we move into the enemy territory of speaking all these horrible things and gossiping and get involved in all these things, right, 
We get out of God's presence and power flow. We need to stay in the flow. We shouldn't be walking out of the flow. We need to be using our mouths for other things. And you know, we think of our mouths as just our mouths. But when you're in the car and you sing a song, if there's dirty words in it, you're singing those dirty words. If you speak things, you are speaking that things. Like, I'm sorry, but like I, the silly game that's going on with Hocus Pocus, it's not silly. It's saying, I cast a spell, and then you're continuing to say what you're casting a spell on. These things, he's using these things to desensitize us and think they're okay. But if you are speaking a spell, you are speaking a spell, which is divination and witchcraft. If you are cursing somebody and saying, I hope they go over there and their car gets demolished, you are speaking a curse over the top of them. We have to watch our mouths. We need to be using our mouths for what God made and created them for, right? Which is to what? To praise him, to preach his word. To, it says, go out and preach my word amongst all the lands, okay? To edify people, okay? To pray, to reach the lost, to help the hurting, to take the brokenhearted and lift them up and encourage them. We should be doing good things with our mouth, but instead we are literally, we're not just hurting others around us with our mouth, but we're hurting our own situations with our mouths. If you can't control your negative mouth traits, then guess what? You have the right to remain silent. You don't have to speak out negativity. You don't have to, if you're sitting at a table and everybody's being demented, you don't have to open your mouth and be demented too. You actually have the right to remain silent. You do not have to open your mouth and get involved in these things that you should not be involved in. You know, who wants to be preached to by a cussing preacher? There's actually a man who's in a state, I'm not going to mention his name, but he's been known as the cussing preacher. That is what they've labeled him. He literally had a twerking contest in his church. When somebody said that having a twerking contest with a bunch of half-naked women in his church was inappropriate, he quoted to the newspaper saying, F this and F that and you people walk around with your F in this part and that part and blankety blankety out. Okay, well if you're walking around and you're talking like that, you are literally not being prosperous. How can you even call yourself a pastor? We have to watch our mouths. I've had a dream and I know I haven't been on here for two weeks, but I've had this reoccurring dream. And in this dream, there was enemies around. And the children of God was trying to open their mouths to come against these enemies. And they literally had no voice. Their voice wouldn't come out. And I was like, I didn't understand what was going on. And I kept praying about it and praying, and it kept coming back and it kept coming back. If we continue to go around cussing, speaking negatively, saying evil things about people, then our effective power that we get through our Lord and Savior is going to lose its anointing and we're going to be like a silent majority against the nation. Haven't you noticed, first off, that with the mask, you're walking around like this, you can't even witness to somebody no more. It's hard to witness to somebody because they can barely understand you under the mask. He's trying to silence us, but we're silencing ourselves with our behavior because if I get on here and I'm cussing at you on this video, you ain't going to care what scripture I'm giving you. You're not going to care what lesson we're learning because all you're going to care about is the foul language that come out of my mouth because it ought not to be so. He wants to choke our voice. He wants to make it to where people don't care what we have to say. And think about how the political correctness that's going around is insane. You're not even supposed to witness to people no more or talk about Jesus's blood or repenting of your sins because it's not politically correct and it might offend somebody. But God tells us right in here what we're supposed to say and not say. And what, you know, better to offend them with the blood of Christ than to offend them with a dirty mouth. And we need to start speaking that positivity in life in ours. And if we are in a situation where the conversation can't be turned, we have the right 
to remain silent, right? And you know, Exodus 14 and 14 says this, the Lord will fight for you while you hold your peace. And the Amplified Version says it this way, the Lord will fight for you. All you need to do is keep silent and remain calm. There is a time to be silent and there is a time to speak. But if you keep speaking these horrible things over your family and you start speak, keep speaking all this negativity, then what are you battling for? Because you're losing the battle with your tongue. We have to quit losing the battle with our tongue. Our tongue is never gonna be perfect, but we can get it under control to where our slip up ain't as bad and that we have more anointing and power flowing through it and we're changing our mind and our heart to be more like Christ so it gets easier and easier. It can be easier, it'll never be complete, but literally, you know, and I, I'm going to call it the itch word with a B, okay? That word back in the day meant a female dog. And if somebody would have called you it back in the mid-century, you would have been highly offended. But somehow we've become desensitized to that word and we label it on ourselves like, yeah, I'm a boss one and I'm a good bit, a diva one. I, and you know, no, it's still an insult, but we're just desensitized to it. So now we're speaking it out over ourselves and half these words, we don't even know what the original meaning was and we're speaking them. I mean, people love to call themselves a diva and a thug and that has its roots in all these demonic things and all these old ancient gods that was false gods. We have to start realizing what we are speaking in our lives. We have to start learning and watching what we say and not just what we say, but how we say it. Not if God heals, but when God heals. Not if God gives me a baby, but when God gives me a baby. Quit taking your situation and making it worse. Don't look at your past and say, well, this happened last time, so I'm waiting for it to happen again. You're speaking life into it. It's a new situation. It's a new day. Start speaking in a new way. We speak a new way for a new day for a new battle. We're not going to keep continuing to live and going down. Loose lips sink ships. Don't let your battleship get sunk by your own doing in your own tongue today. And that's all I have today. And I'm going to close in prayer. Lord, Father God, I come to you today, my Father God. And I thank you, my Father God. I thank you that you and your spirit can teach me the right ways today and you can teach everybody on here the right ways today my father god i thank you today my father god that you've given us the ability to speak life and speak power and speak things that preserve our lives my father god and i thank you my father god but as this week goes on that i know that we're going to be aware my father god of the things that are sinking our battleships today my father god that the things we're speaking over our children and our grandchildren and our brothers and our sisters and our mothers and our fathers, my Father God. I pray that this week, as we're looking at our prodigals, my Father God, that we would watch how we speak over our prodigals, my Lord, and we would only speak over our prodigals in a way, my Father God, that would bring them back to life, my Father God, and not in any way that would push them to somewhere negative today, my Father God. I pray that we would begin to watch that tongue, my Father God, and we would think about what we were saying, my Father God. God. And if we're in a situation that we can't change the climate of the room, my Father God, I pray that we would use our right to remain silent, my Father God. And I praise you and thank you, my Lord. And I pray that we take this into our hearts, my Father God, because out of the abundance of the mouth, the heart comes out. What is in here, my Father God, comes out of here. And I pray, my Father God, that we would take this into our heart, my Father God. It would fall on good soil, my Father God, that our mouths would quit speaking bad things today, my Lord. In your heavenly Father's name I pray, amen. And I'm going to be out of town for the next couple of weeks. Please get on and support the wise women that are going to be doing it. I've got you guys a really good lineup for while I'm good done. Kitty is fabulous at spiritual warfare and she's had a lot of fights of her own. She knows her territory. She knows what she's talking about. Elsie is a fabulous teacher. You have a stellar lineup for while I'm gone. Please get on and support these women of God and hear what they want to teach you. I love you all. Have a good week.